Udu, it sounds like this program that we're talking about in Africa, it, it's very ambitious and it's centered on the most sensitive of sectors, the, the, the care, the medical care that we, we provide to people. You have to wonder whether enough thought has been given to unintended consequences, negative side effects. And you get to this in Strings Attached, your very powerful uh, film on this subject. C can you speak to some of these unintended consequences? Right. We went to uh, some villages. This was actually in Uganda. Uh, the the uh, video that we had uh, and interviews that we had made uh, for Strings Attached, the documentary that I released a few years ago. We went to villages and we saw these women who were ready to talk to us and most of them could not even speak English, David, but we were, with the use of translators, we were able to find out that an organization, a Western organization came into their village. Uh, they were given uh, contraception. Not only were they uh, giving contraception, but they were telling women that these contraceptions had close to no side effects whatsoever. But what did we see? We saw women who were suffering all kinds of side effects. We spoke to doctors who had been community doctors who had dealt with women, African women in villages who have had side effects that none of them ever expected, none of them ever wanted. Uh, some woman also told us how somebody locked them in a room. This was the allegation she made. She said when they got there, they showed them an IUD and the women, the, the women in this village were saying they didn't want the IUD, but somebody locked them up in the room and eventually ended up putting the IUDs into them. So if you think about this, somebody going into a Western, uh, into an African village, you are giving women, you are coming on a mobile clinic, you are giving women something like the IUD that requires almost a surgical process to put in and remove, and then you're leaving. This was what had happened to these women. They came, they, they gave for free of charge, this, the, uh, the IUD gave it to several women, and by the time the side effects set in, it was almost impossible for them to have it removed because some of them were bleeding non-stop, some of them were uh, suffering all kinds of ailments, they were having discharge, uh, they were talking about uh, weight loss, uh, you know, there were all these things that had happened to them. One of them said she had almost like a partial paralysis, like one side of her body, she said she couldn't feel anything. Uh, some of them had uh, horrible issues with their marriage following that, of course, with all kinds of health issues coming up for them that they didn't expect. These are poor women men and there was absolutely no way for them to have the, the IUDs removed. Eventually some ended up in a hospital where they were charged to have it removed. So imagine someone gives you something for free of charge and then to have it removed if you don't want it anymore you are having to pay for it. But then on further questioning one of the women said she knew who came because I of course I'm speaking about them like it's some Western organization and we asked her who was it that came to your village on the mobile clinic and did this to you uh, she said it was Mary Stopes uh, you know they may not understand English but they knew what the name of the organization was they they saw the logo they would recognize it they would point it out anytime any day but there was also something else that we found had happened. In addition to the IUDs that were given, there were some other group of women that were given uh, Norplant. And at the time when this was happening, if anybody knows about Norplant, Norplant, uh, once it came on the market, had been uh, had had so many complications in Western market. People had uh, sued the company. Many people had asked for settlement from the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, so the, Norplant was having so many problems. And then the pharmaceutical companies, in conjunction with the sexual and reproductive health and rights organizations from the West, then took it to African villages and they gave it to women in rural areas who had no way whatsoever of suing the company, of getting, you know, taking recourse in the judicial system. So as far as my research is concerned, I have searched and I've gone through various uh, uh, African institutions and various African countries. I still have not found one single person who was able to make any claim or get any settlement from a pharmaceutical company that has given them contraception that then ended up causing them lots of health complications and problems. And this is something that not only the women are telling us they're experiencing, it's something that 
people within the healthcare institution in various African countries are seeing happening along the pathway of uh, Western donors and Western uh, organizations whose primary job is going out uh, sterilizing people. So you can almost see that as a kind of a forced sterilization. Uh, definitely it's false advertising. They are destroying lives and many times they come in a mobile clinic and then they disappear. So these are things that almost border on human rights abuse. For those who uh, think and talk about human rights, it, it could definitely not be a good thing that, that a Western organization comes into an African village or comes into an African town and they have access to women and they are giving women pharmaceutical products that have already been rejected in the West or have had problems in the West, but then they quickly then make a, dis, you know, completely disappear that the women are not even able to uh, get back to them and have the problem sorted. It's a problem, and any Western, any Western uh, taxpayer should be thinking and asking themselves, is it a good thing that the money you have given or the tax that you've given that you think is going into making people's lives better, is it, is it a good thing that your money may actually be ending up destroying lives, real lives, in uh, places in, in various villages and towns far away from where you are? So imagine if this happened to your own daughter in Canada, that your child went out to somewhere and then someone had some kind of pharmaceutical product, some kind of pharmaceutical device in, 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 you know, put into her body. And then uh, this product happened to be something that in some other part of the world has already been rejected. These are things that are unheard of. These are things that in Western countries, parents will actually uh, be, uh, you know, rather upset. People will be asking for somebody to hold responsible. This is happening all across the African continent in the pathway of those who call themselves sexual and reproductive health and rights organization, like Marie Stopes International, like International Planned Parenthood Federation, Again, I remind you, these are organizations that are large collaborators and partners to the Canadian government. Uju, you've said that this agenda doesn't excite Africans. So who is the government of Canada trying to excite or to please? It sounds a little as if they're trying to please their own block of voters, uh, maybe the media, and maybe their supporters and like-minded allies in the UN and some of the major foundations that also see abortion as the solution to all of Africa's problems. Right, so we've seen uh, the Canadian administration, the current administration, doing all of this without listening to us, without hearing, uh, hearing uh, the African side of things, without seeking our opinions. And then you look a little closer and you find activists within Western countries, like in Canada, uh, who are excited and who are applauding uh, the Canadian government for what they are doing. We go to the United Nations and you see the people who surround the Canadian, uh, you know, the Canadian diplomats and the, the Canadian uh, mission there at the United Nations, people who are speaking to them and communicating with them. Again, they are activists. Um, I just like to remind people that uh, I think it was only a year ago, if that, when uh, in Vancouver, Women Deliver, uh, which is an organization, a feminist organization, held their, one of their meetings or one of their conferences out there. And the Canadian Prime Minister had come to that event and he made a promise, he made an announcement at that event. That really captures, David, what you were saying, the response to uh, the Prime Minister, the Canadian Prime Minister's announcement will show you exactly who is excited by all of these things happening because immediately he made the announcement to the feminist agenda, the kind of money that Canada was then going to infuse on top of everything else that the Canadian government had already done up to that point. These women and activists were excited, they were jumping up, they were happy with what was going on. Meanwhile, when you go to African countries, it is you will be hard pressed to find even a few people or a handful of people who know exactly what Canada is spending on in an African country. So uh, the Canadian government uh, spends more than $2 billion every year on aid in Africa for various things, for various projects. So how is it that spending that amount of money and putting in even, you know, a lot of, a lot of 
hundreds of millions of dollars into the so-called sexual and productive health and rights that it's not it doesn't make it to the any of the African national news it, it people don't know about it people are not excited about it it's not being announced on TV we're not excited about it. If it was something that had to do with, say, for example, scholarship or some, the Canadian government is building a school or hospitals, or that could have made better news. That could, that will actually make better press in Africa and people will talk about it. People will applaud Canada. But the Africans at the moment, they are not applauding Canada, not definitely not for the so-called feminist agenda and also not for the sexual and reproductive health and rights uh, agenda that has now uh, essentially been carried out uh, very successfully if you like, by the current administration. Uh, the only people applauding the Canadian government, the only people excited about uh, what the Canadian government is doing are the activists, the radical activists in the West. And that's because Canada and the Canadian government is achieving their dream across the African continent.